Welcome back, Alpha Hunters. Whew. The past week is basically a daze to me. Uh, from about last Tuesday morning to about five minutes ago. Trying to get bearings back, I guess, a little bit. Just a lot of traveling, a lot of driving, a lot of overnight driving. So a little rest deprived, I guess. Not as much now, uh, but definitely over the weekend was a little rough as I was trying to recover. As far as recovering, woo! Yeah, this is going to be a pretty important week. So as we saw from the, kind of the, the wrap up for last week, you know, we, we saw... The Q's kind of underperformed, kind of made lower highs steadily throughout the week. Spy made higher highs uh, through Thursday. So it's kind of a kind of interesting way to kind of look at last week as you got to kind of had that intra week switch. And that was kind of the thing that, you know, we had talked about the week ending of the week before. So we'll see how this week goes. Obviously, it's a very important one as you're going to start to get into the major heart of earnings. Uh, the market did gap up Monday. Nope, sorry, looking at the wrong day. Uh, the market did gap down on Monday, roughly 0.1%. Uh, you can see we had a very choppy push back higher there for the first 45 minutes. And then here for the last 45 minutes, nice little drop off. Uh, it was pretty steady there for about 30 minutes. You can see just nice little wipe out there. Currently down about a third of a percent there on the SPY. Q's had a much stronger start. Probably a lot of people coming out optimistic about tech earnings week. Try to buy it up and then kind of came right back down. So there you go. So there you go. Uh, Q's currently down about a quarter percent. Uh, the IWM basically a flat open, but you see they're just trading lower steadily throughout the day. Currently down one and a half percent there on the IWM. DIA currently down about half percent. Nice little gap down there on the DIA. Not much of one really, but. A little bit of a gap down. Nice little crazy first five minute and a nice little sell down steadily throughout the day. DIA down a little bit over half a percent. RSP, this is going to be the interesting one, right? RSP currently down 0.8%. Uh, we did look at the SPY Q's. SPY was kind of a little bit more choppy bullish. Q's was straight up bullish there for the first 45 minutes, which was going to basically mean the RSP is probably a little bit more bearish there for the first 45 minutes. So yeah, kind of getting hit pretty good here in the world of the RSPs. So that is how it looks. It's gonna be really tough to be bearish on the RSP right now, uh, especially uh, on an intraday kind of time frame. As we are just now pulling into that 10 EMA, I would say not exactly a great time to go bearish on the short term, probably intraday. I think you're probably just gonna be sitting on your hands right now, waiting, seeing what's kind of going on, wait for things to develop. Anyways, there's the RSP, DIA, still above its TNA, EMA, pretty good. Uh, definitely could sell down to it today. It's, it's definitely breaking below Friday, so yeah, we'll see. Uh, but not, not nearly as bad uh, as the RSP there. All right, IWM breaking below its 10 EMA today. Okay. So yeah, we broke that September high, came right back down below it, uh, even just below that Late August high, I guess the the, the beginning of August, uh, or you could say it came back below that August high, I guess even August first or even that late August high. So it came back below both of those. So yeah, today's bearish candle there on the on the IWM not exactly looking great, and kind of you know we were kind of talked about that on the market outlook as we broke that September high, but it was getting back up into these highs. So you're gonna get some resistance. It might chop around here for a bit, but if it doesn't take out the slow from September and continue to kind of chop and just steadily just kind of hang out here in the lower 220s to mid 220s maybe we'll push back higher but you know if it can kind of continue this kind of pattern it's been doing here over the past couple of months uh, just kind of continue to get tighter in here and then maybe it breaks out later on but I'd say for now it's I mean you can tell whenever we've gotten you know kind of up into that area we've we've had some pretty good pullbacks before so yeah I'm, i wasn't wouldn't be surprised if we continue to see a little bit more bearishness there in that of but probably nothing i would be screaming i want to be bearish on as far as the cues let's see got a nice little upper wick yeah we saw that quick bullishness burst of bullishness there to start the day Oop, first 45 minutes there uh definitely is coming back down but it's sitting right on top of that 10 ema 
got these lower highs coming in over the past week. So it doesn't really matter until we get to big tech earnings, SPY. Yeah, selling back down here as well today. So Tesla is going to be this week. So we'll get Tesla Wednesday. It'll trade Thursday. Okay. Which Tesla obviously had that big breakdown from October 11th, which when they announced their vehicle deliveries for Q3. Uh, but yeah, after that gap down, it's just kind of got a whole lot of sideways. Kind of has this little hump. See if it rolls over. VIX, uh, gap up on VIX on Monday. Makes sense. Typically it happens when you're in like the teens area. And not too much kind of going on here. We'll, we'll just have to wait and see. The dollar bouncing back very strong from a little bit of a bearish day there on Friday. But last week was a pretty strong week. Bullish. This is going to continue to put pressure on, on uh, earnings. GLD, nice little gap up, but it's pulled back basically flat on the day from Friday. But, I mean, it's pretty extended, you know, from the moving averages. So, if you're going to trade this on the short term, I wouldn't be really looking bullish. I also wouldn't be looking bearish. I might just sideways consolidate and rest, wait for the moving averages to kind of come up. So, gold, I'd just kind of be waiting on. Yields, ooh, breaking higher. Man. So, this was going to be one of the interesting things to look at this week. As we came into the week, as, you know, we got that pullback to that 4% level. You got that bounce also with that 10 EMA you know, coming up and basically connecting in at about that 4% level. And was this going to be the bounce before, you know, kind of come down, bounce retest, not take out that high from October 14th and then roll over and break back down? Uh, I think we just got the answer. I mean, we're coming right into that 200 moving average there on yields. And yeah, it's a uh, continuation higher is, is what that's saying. I wouldn't really want to be playing bonds bearish based on this right now. You'd want to see, you know, definitely break that 200 moving average that we just saw, which is basically right on. Uh, you want to see a break above that and then maybe take it on a retest higher. Definitely on a pretty good consolidation. So anyways, yields looking pretty good. I'm going to take a look at the two year. Ooh, look at this base on the two year. Nice pop higher here. Beginning part of October. Sideways consolidation there for a couple of weeks. Look at that. Looks like we're going to continue higher. Looking pretty good there. As far as the 30 year... Yep, 30 year continuing higher, just like the 10 year as well. So there you go. As far as the 10 and 2 inversion, well, we're seeing a little bit push higher. Nice little base here over the past couple of weeks. Probably does continue higher, but I mean, it doesn't have to just steamroll higher. The fact that it's uninverted is probably the bigger deal. And as far as I know, something we've been kind of keeping track of is that 10 and 1. Yeah, the 10 and 1. We definitely saw a pretty good activity there on. Kind of the 10 and 1 last week as we continued a little bit higher. Almost got uninverted there last Monday. Came back down, retested, and pushing a little bit higher today. So this is, I think, I believe this is the, like the last inverted yield curve. So once this uninverts, uh, you definitely going to be watching out for some bearish activity on the markets. HYG, high yield corporate bonds, definitely breaking down today as yields are pushing higher. Nice little gap down. It was looking okay last week, but not exactly like a strong thrusting move higher, more like a resting consolidation push and bullish. So kind of a little bit like a little bit more like a flag pattern type move, right? We got that bearish breakdown and we just had this extended kind of flag pattern. So if this is the breakdown of that flag pattern or the continuation of that flag pattern, maybe we'll continue to see a breakdown. With how yields move through the summer, it's really kind of tough to be like, yes, I want to be bearish on bonds because <laughs> this would all be really counter trend type stuff. Uh, I mean, you really have to pick your spots. You really got to pick your spots and have very disciplined risk, uh, risk, risk management. Make sure you, your stop losses are really at the right spots uh, on some of these bonds. But yeah, you can see the LQD, you know, had that breakdown very much like the TLT kind of had that breakdown. Uh, well, the TLT had a pretty Pretty good breakdown there, mid early, uh, mid early, well, mid and late um, September. A very, very strong one there for a few days, and I think that was when uh, we kind of first had talked about po the possibility of looking to be bearish on bonds on any kind of retest. And yeah, we got that, and then we had that really quick there drop off there for about a week uh, on TLT. But it's like I. I once you started coming down into some of these support levels on the TLT, it's like, I, I, I wouldn't want to be bearish on bonds anymore, really. 
it's just kind of more of a wait and see kind of game. You want to see it clear out of a lot of these type of support and resistance levels. Make sure it ch it actually changes the trend at that point in time, and then you're probably going to be looking for more retest before more rollover action. And obviously, we can see that we're continuing to break down. I would say just let it continue to break down, and then uh, honestly, it looks like it's clearing out a lot of these support levels. So you're probably going to be looking to be back bearish on bonds. Yeah, on, on any kind of maybe good, decent retest. And obviously, we'll keep an eye on it. But it got it got choppy in here where we kind of expected it to. As far as sector rotation on the day, real estate is basically the big lagger behind. Really la lagging. Makes perfect sense. We're seeing yields continue. The trend, the recent trend over the past couple of weeks, higher. Breaking out higher on Monday. Very strong move there on yield. So yeah, real estate's getting hit pretty good on the day. We got materials, discretionaries, underperforming, healthcare, financials, communications, and staples all underperforming. Industrials kind of in line with the market there. Utilities, slight outperformance. Tech outperforming a little bit. Definitely off the uh, higher outperformance of the day. Kind of got hit there in roughly that second 30 minutes of the day or so. Okay. Uh, anyways, tech, a little bit outperforming there. And energy is kind of just holding steady. Had a little bit more of a gap up today than some of the other areas of the market, but energy is a little bit positive. But the one of the things it looks like is all sectors are actually negative uh, compared to on the week to start out. But energies are really on that zero line. As far as intraday price action, tech is doing pretty good. People will probably just be a little bit more optimistic off their tech just underperformed last week and we're getting close to tech earnings. So tech outperforming there intraday industrials underperforming financials, staples, discretionaries, healthcare, energies underperforming intraday communications, utilities and materials underperforming. And you see real estate just really getting smackoed there intraday.